In this episode of Tech Attack, we have not one but two smartphones to review, introducing the other siblings of the HTC One series, the HTC One S and the HTC One V. The HTC One V is what many consider as a low-end smartphone, but we might be wrong to say that. As you can see, with the design and the feel of the phone, with its engraved HTC logo at the back, it feels premium and it puts some higher-end smartphones to shame. The iconic HTC's J Leno Chin design is evident here and it helps with the overall balance of the phone. Although the design here looks nice, there's one complaint that I have and that is the micro USB port for charging. It kind of gets in the way of you doing things and also the USB cable is a bit too short for my liking. The HTC One V comes with a 1GHz processor and a 3.7-inch IPS LCD 2 screen. This is not groundbreaking, but because it's targeted as a low-end smartphone, it's good enough. However, this comes with Android 4.0 and that's a very very good thing. HTC Sense 4 has been stripped of all its fancy animation in order for it to run smoothly. The camera is a 5 megapixel with LED flash. Again, good but not great. The interface for the camera is simple and not too complicated. The HTC One V comes with the Beats audio integration, but to me, I find it hard to believe it is anything other than a marketing gimmick. It's a very basic phone with an exceptional battery life. At 999 ringgit, it's hard to really pick out faults on this phone, and if signed up with a contract, you can even get it for free. Next up is the HTC One S. This is the middle child of HTC's One series. Packing a 1.5GHz Snapdragon S3 processor wrapped in an extremely slim aluminium body with a 4.3-inch Pentile Matrix Super AMOLED display, the One S aims to fill the gap between super phones and low-end smartphones. Although Pentile screen technology is not something that we will be seeing come 2013, it's hard to pick out the pixels with the naked eye. The phone feels premium in your palms and probably the perfect size as well. Performance is snappy and smooth for a dual-core processor, but it does lack the wow factor. At the back, you'll find the same 8 megapixel camera from the bigger brother HTC One X, and I'm happy to report that the shutter speed is just as good. However, the overall quality of the pictures is on the average scale, but where this camera excels is when you take it outdoors in broad daylight. HD video recording comes with the same function as the HTC One X, whereby you can snap pictures while recording, and that is a good feature, although slightly slow in snap time. This comes with Android 4.0.3 and HTC Sense 4, which feels much more smoother now than before. There is still room for improvement as you still do get the occasional force reboot or apps crashing. Um, the keyboard is not the best that I've used, but thankfully there are tons of keyboard apps on the Play Store. The USB cable is too short for my liking and this comes with the Beats audio gimmick as well. It does nothing except boosting the bass but it does make you wonder whether does it actually only works with the Beats headphones. Gaming on this phone is great because of its size, loading speed is not something that will make you pull your hair out and performance wise it's good enough for a casual gamer who likes to put his footballing skills to the test with FIFA 12. Battery life is a huge plus point on this phone. On a full proper usage, I managed to get about 18 hours before the battery icon turned yellow. That included a lot of Instagramming, Facebooking, Twittering, emails and the regular WhatsApp chats and SMS and the occasional phone calls. At 1838 ringgit, it's a premium price but with its fantastic super slim design, and snappy performance with promises of Android 4.1 Jelly Bean on the way, it's hard to not like this.